Hi guys, Melanie here at Vision City Design Studio. Thank you for watching this video where I'm going to talk to you about five tips for selling your art. For those of you who have never met me before and never heard of me, my name is Melanie and I am the founder and designer here at Vision City and I'm really excited to help you because I've actually been on this journey myself. I've been running my own design business for over 10 years and about five years ago I launched my first ever art products for sale on Etsy and it's really revolutionized my whole business and my life. I actually began to sell to customers all over the world. I got opportunity to sell on other major selling platforms online, as well as wholesale deals, licensing deals, uh, trade show opportunities, and so on. I got featured on major blogs, and it's just been an awesome, awesome journey. There's been a lot of ups, a lot of downs, a lot of figuring things out. But nowadays what I like to do is I like to help artists who are just like me trying to figure this out, how to get your art products out there for sale. Now tip number one is really, really simple, but sometimes it's hard to swallow for artists, and so that's why it's my first, first tip for selling your art. The number one thing I would tell artists to do is to narrow your niche. Now what do I mean by that? I remember hearing one of my favorite designers in the world, and he's actually from Invisible Creature, which is a design studio in Seattle. His name is uh, Ryan Clark. He's brilliant. Him and his brother are like the best designers. I'm a huge fan. And I remember hearing them interviewed one time or reading their interview online, and they were asked about what advice they would give to designers who were just starting out. And the number one thing they said was to, that they said, art is vast, so find your niche. In other words, be good at one thing and become really known for that one thing and really narrow your focus on that one thing and really love on it because if you're not known for one thing, it's really hard to become recognized. It's really hard to charge a certain price. It's really hard to kind of move forward as an artist. That's what I took out of it. When I heard that and I read it, it really, really encouraged me because at the time I was doing everything. I was being uh, doing wedding photography, I was doing band photography, I was doing uh, graphic design for skateboards, t-shirts, band covers, I mean logo design for like hairdressing salons, like all these kind of things. They were all all over the place. I didn't really have one narrow niche. And when I actually launched my art product collection, I was forced to really find my real voice as an artist. And I found that when I focused on just my simple black and white illustration, the things I really loved to work on, I felt like it opened up a world to me that I didn't have before. And people began to really see it and began to follow it. People began to become customers of mine and really follow this kind of journey I was on. And by following that one niche style, and even to this day, years later, I'm still working in a very black and white, recognized kind of trademark style of Vision City. And it's not really trademark, but you know what I mean. It's kind of like my iconic style now because I really allowed myself to focus on one niche and be okay with that. I don't have to be everything to everybody. And frankly, neither do you because by narrowing, you're actually becoming more um, focused on the people who are going to buy from you anyway. So why focus on everybody when everyone's not going to buy from us? It's just impossible. Any brand out there who's doing well is very narrowed on their audience and on their um, specific niche style. Now this brings me to my second tip and that is to define your audience. Now what do I mean by define your audience? To really discover who are the people that you want to serve as an artist. Now I know art and by creating art we feel like we're really looking inward and really being true to ourselves and that's awesome. But in business you do have to have physical people who are going to buy from us. So who are your people? Who is your, as they say, tribe in marketing terms? Who are the people who want to buy from you? Who are the people who you find are naturally drawn to you? Who are the people you're thinking of as you're creating your art products? And frankly, a lot of times, hint, hint, a lot of times you and I are our number one audience. So for example, maybe you are an artist and you create art for baby rooms and really fun cute illustrations that are going to be hung on walls as wall art in baby rooms. But maybe the reason why you create those is because you are a young mom and you wanted some really fun cute stuff for your baby room. So your audience is going to be a lot like you. They're going to be a young mom, they're going to be a new mom so to speak, they're going to have maybe a child, toddler and so on. So you a lot of times are very much related so to speak to your audience. Or maybe you are a fashion illustrator and you like a certain style of fashion. You're really into that. You're really into like really high, high fashion, very Vogue, you know, Harper's Bazaar kind of cool stuff. 
maybe that is what inspires you. So if that inspires you, then guess what? That's probably going to inspire the people who are going to buy your fashion illustrations and hang it on their walls and hang it in their wall gallery, in their dressing room, or maybe in their, um, their bedroom or wherever they would hang art. So it's really important. Think, get your head inside of the people who uh, would potentially be your customers and really define them and even write them down. Write down attributes of them, write their age range. What gender are they? What age group? Are they married? Are they unmarried? Are they parents? Are they not parents? Um, are they in school? Are they in college? You know, write down things that are kind of attributes of your potential customer. And I even say to go as far as to give them a name. And I know that sounds crazy, but give your customer a name and actually give them some kind of identity. So then it makes it feel like they're real. I mean, gosh, go online and find a random photo of somebody that you think looks like somebody that would buy from you and print it out and literally put it on your fridge or put it on your, you know, your dorm room wall or whatever and just be like, okay, imagine there's a real person out there who's going to potentially buy my products. Actually start to identify them as a real human being, not just as numbers, not just as cash coming in over PayPal, but as a real human being. And trust me, when you do that, it's going to totally affect the way you do business. Number one, you're going to treat them with so much more respect when you realize that they're a human and they're not just money coming in, obviously. We want to treat people like people, right? Not like numbers. So I want to encourage you to definitely do that. Define your audience. Number three would be obvious to some, but not to all, and that is to build an online art shop. Now, maybe you have art products that you sell at maybe live events, maybe you do craft fairs, or maybe you just kind of sell them to people that come by your home and so on, but you don't have an online art shop. Guess what? By not doing that, you're eliminating so much opportunity to sell your art. I know it sounds really obvious, but a lot of artists have never done this. They've never put their stuff out there. I personally love selling on Etsy. I'm not an advocate or a representative, I should say. I'm not paid by Etsy to say so. I'm an artist. But I find that their online selling platform for artists is so awesome. It's very supported. It's a very much a creative community. And it's very much supported by people who buy handmade products because that's the customer base of Etsy. So it's a really great um, community. The ethics are awesome. It's just a really great place to sell art. So that's just my two cents. But maybe for you, it's somewhere else. Maybe you want to sell on Amazon, Society6. Um, maybe you want to sell on Big Cartel or on another online selling platform. You got to sell where works for you as a business, but make sure you get an online art shop going. Tip number four is really simple. Be social. Be social about the fact that you are an artist wanting to sell your art. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, get involved on social media. Make sure you have an Instagram account. Make sure you have Pinterest. Make sure you have Facebook and Twitter. I personally really love Facebook and Instagram. Those are the two that I really love. That's just where I find my audience is hanging out. And again, going back to step uh, two or tip two, Finding out where your audience hangs out is really important to know what kind of social media you should be on because not all social medias are, are created equal for your audience. So maybe your audience is specifically on Pinterest. Maybe your audience is very much on Instagram. If so, you want to hang out on Instagram too and you want to be social on Instagram. Now, what do I mean by being social? I mean by going on to other artists' uh, platforms on their Instagram or on their Facebook page, making comments, adding, adding to the conversation, liking things, just being social with other people who are already in your world, um, liking maybe your, your customers or potential customers' uh, posts, commenting, and don't do that thing where people just be like, hey, check out my stuff and be so aggressive. You have to be social. Think about it like an online party, okay? When you walk into a party, you're not just going to walk up to people and shove your business card in their face, right? Nobody likes that. So you want to be social on social media. You want to make sure you are mingling and schmoozing, so to speak. Maybe once you get in conversation with somebody, you can then private message them and be like, hey, I thought you might like this as you and I were talking about this the other day. And then you can share your stuff. But just by getting people to kind of come around to your, um, say, your Instagram account or your Pinterest and actually start to like and appreciate your uh, products and even the process that you are sharing with them on your social media. So being social on social media is very important and not just about yourself. By being social about other people's things, what they are talking about, what they are posting, 
and really schmoozing that way, liking other people's posts and so on, is a great way to generate more awareness about the art that you're creating. Now, there are so many different things I could talk about in these top five tips, but number five is going to be very interesting and unique. What I want to encourage you to do as well is to allow people into your journey. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean, maybe you have a blog or even over social media, um, you have a way of really telling a bit more of your story. I find that that is really what connects people to a brand is when you are allowing a bit of people in like people into your world. So maybe you're doing sketches and you're taking photos of your raw sketches or maybe you're doing a Facebook live and you're talking about the fact that you're in process creating a whole painting series and you're talking about it. You're letting people into your studio. Maybe you do a studio tour video where you actually go around your, your studio, you show your supplies, you show kind of the process of the pieces you're working on. Maybe you tell a bit of your background story. That's really powerful over social media as well or over your blog or any kind of online platform. Maybe your Etsy right up in your about section. By letting people into your journey, you will actually allow them to kind of fall in love, so to speak, with you and with your brand and really begin to relate to you. When people relate is when they are ready to make purchases. When they relate, they are ready then to open up you into their world. And so sometimes you might hear some of their stories. You might be able to make a connection. You know, for example, um, I actually began to kind of tell stories of the why behind my artwork. And for example, um, one of my art pieces is an I love you hand. And I was talking about the making of, of that I love you hand, which is a sign language um, representation of I love you. And I found, I got a lot of feedback on that, that other people were telling me their, their stories about, say, a family member who may be hearing impaired, and that's a real symbol that they do in their family to say, I love you. Um, and so it became this really beautiful conversation among potential customers, and some people did buy, and then they would send me photos of them holding the print or them having it on their wall. And it was a really great dialogue because I allowed them into my journey then they allowed me into their world. And I feel like people miss that because people are so obsessed with just getting a sale that they kind of push past people and they don't really open up. And I found that by opening up a bit of my story with people and telling a bit more about myself, that it's actually allowed me to connect to more people. And keep in mind, as an artist, you're not just selling art, you're letting people into your world, okay? And people are fascinated by artists. They wanna know more about them, they kind of want to get inside of our head, so to speak. And so I want to encourage you to kind of allow them. Obviously, you don't want to overshare and talk about your, I don't know, marriage problems or your personal problem. You know, like, don't go too far with this, okay? <laughs> Beware of that. But you definitely want to open up in relation to your art and maybe the heart behind what you're doing, the why behind what you're doing and so on, how you feel like it's really empowering other people and so on. You basically want to share why you care about it and why maybe they should care as well and how it could help them and benefit them. I hope this video has been really helpful to you artists as you're on this journey of selling your art. And keep in mind, these are just like the tip of the iceberg, okay? There's a lot more I could share in this video, but I wanted to make a quick short video just to kind of get you guys rolling. For a lot of you who are on the process of kind of on the fence about how to even do this or how to go about it, I want to make sure you're aware of a webinar that I have going right now that is free. It's about uh, within an hour to 90 minutes long, and I want to encourage you to check it out. It's free information. I go over a whole bunch of different things in this webinar that are really helpful. A lot of artists have been sending me feedback that they've been really inspired and encouraged and challenged to really grow their art business by watching this webinar. Now, there is a chat in the webinar. It's a pre-recorded webinar, but I actually get the chats. So as you type in chats, I will be able to get them and answer them to you. I respond personally to all of your questions. So make sure to ask me questions. Let me know your feedback and how you feel about the webinar. And I'm here to serve you guys because I really believe that artists should help artists. Artists, and that's really what I'm doing here. So I encourage you guys to check out the webinar, click the link below, and I'll see you in there.